Can-Am is known for producing some of the most wonderful triple-wheeled bikes out there. The Spider is in a league of its own, but its little brother Riker doesn't mess around either. The bike is simply a more affordable version of its elder brother and even offers a variety of options. We especially love the sports version. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we are going to give you a review of the Can-Am Riker Sport 900. So let us begin! Can-Am's Riker is an affordable motorcycle aimed towards first-time riders and younger consumers. Young people place a premium on being able to put their own stamp on their purchases. When it comes to personalization, the Riker really shines because of the options for paint and trim that are available. A simple set of tools from around the house is all you need to change the color of the accent panels, rearrange the seats, and apply decals to the wheels. Two characteristics worth mentioning are the self canceling turn signals and the compact LCD instrument cluster housed in the Riker's glove box. Can-Am's website builder makes it easy to see the various windscreen and storage options that are available. This sends out a clear message to automakers all over the world. Can-Am just does things a little better than you guys. Just look at their creations. They are absolute treats to look at, but we know that you should never judge a book by its cover. So let us give you a rundown of all the wonderful things this bike has to offer. The Riker isn't your average bike in many ways. A plastic plug next to the manual parking brake serves as the key. The parking brake is essential on the Riker, which weighs 616 pounds with the 900cc engine. All three wheels can be stopped with the press of a single pedal located next to the right foot peg. When riding the Riker, you can put your whole faith in the exceptional braking power. The startup process may seem complicated at first since it requires the user to press buttons in a precise order and activate a throttle micro switch before the engine turns over. Moving on, let's talk about how the Riker's drive shaft connects to the single back wheel. This Riker is available with only a continuously variable transmission. The Riker can feel fairly rough when it's first pushed off the line if the operator hasn't trained their wrists and hands to do so. When the throttle is pressed carelessly, it causes a jolt and the shock of inertia to take control of the Riker. However, it just takes a few minutes of riding time on the Riker until you can smoothly glide out of turns with minimal effort. Now, a little about the engine of the sports version. It is a 900cc inline 3 and produces around 82 horsepower and 58 foot-pounds of torque. Now, this is a pretty powerful engine, and you will need to get used to it before you go zooming about. Oh, and don't forget to hold on tight. Nobody would want you sliding off the bike just because you were a little too careless with your grip. Now, let's talk about the driving experience. As the Riker's learning curve flattens down, riders will begin to notice a wide variety of unique qualities that cannot be found in conventional motorcycles. It is evident that the three-wheel design offers superior stability at low speeds compared to a motorcycle, regardless of how good their rider is. There is plenty of room to maneuver in a lane thanks to Riker's overall width being roughly 150 millimeters narrower than the original smart cars but cutting down the side of traffic won't be as convenient. At low speeds, guiding the Riker requires a strong push on the handlebars, similar to that required for a go-kart. Even while the Riker looks daunting at first, once moving it can be controlled with far less effort. Looking down at the Riker's front outboard wheels is reminiscent of looking down at the wheels of a go-kart, but no go-kart is going to give you the same feel or vibe as this amazing beast on the road. The Riker's exposed suspension and inside look at the brake calipers and discs give a top-down view to marvel at all these components do when on the move, which is something no other motorcycle could offer to anyone with a mechanical interest or the desire to learn more about how a vehicle works. In that regard, the Riker could be compared favorably to an open-wheel racer. When making that flawless stop on the white line of every junction, the rider may become intoxicated while daydreaming about completing a Formula One race. Even though these are Riker's most distinctive selling qualities, it's the shocking acceleration that is the best feature of the 900cc model. The CVT offers a twist-and-go riding experience, making the acceleration quick and tailored to the rider's need to fully unleash the power at any time. So believe us when we say that nothing comes close to matching the experience that this bike is going to give you. The sound created by the engine and exhaust is fairly soulless and most simply feels like metallic background noise, which is kind of good because some people just don't like the noise. 
The Riker has two driving modes, Sport and Eco, which both significantly alter the throttle responsiveness. Additionally, Sports mode disables the rear wheel's traction control, making it simple to cause a little bit of oversteer. But the abs will activate well before the rider gets into any real trouble. Now, after telling you all the great things about the Riker, it would be unjust not to tell you about some of the problems with this vehicle. The Riker's suspension tuning has to be its major drawback. Simply put, the suspension is excessively firm. Even though the seat is very squishy, the rear wheel in particular crashes over significant divots in the road, leaving no cushion for the impacts. If there are any potholes, manhole covers, or other obstructions in the road, the Riker will hit them since the three-wheel layout creates three independent paths of movement. You'll find yourself aiming for the road annoyances with the front wheel for the sake of smoother rides because the front suspension is better adjusted. Would the Riker's stability at high speeds be compromised by the extra slack in the rear suspension? As with any larger motorcycle, the Riker will wander around at highway speeds, so the added stability might not be as significant. One has to wonder if adding adjustable suspension to the Riker Rally, a more feature-rich and off-road oriented version of the Riker, will address the problems experienced with the sports model. Another first regret is that the build quality could be better around the button clusters. Every other product on the market now is nothing like the Riker. The Riker may or may not appeal to you greatly depending on your previous riding experiences. A person's perception of the allure of a three-wheel motorcycle must be left to that person. Despite several flaws, it is highly recommended that anyone who finds the Riker intriguing have a test drive. The experience is truly unlike anything else, and the thrills and security are true. In our opinion, we really like the bike, at least on smooth roads. The torque was enough to make us fall in love with this bike, but we still believe that there are a lot of things lacking in this bike especially pertaining to its shocks. Simply said, getting bounced around due to potholes isn't something that anybody would enjoy. So that is all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time.